This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. So I lied. I wasn't supposed to be here today, but I can't get enough of my Liar. Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast action. I mean, my guy, Greg, I just, I can't quit him. And we're here thanks to uh, Athletic Greens, your one-stop shopping for 75 high-quality vitamins to help you start your day right. And I want to uh, I want to make sure that people are warned about this. You might hear a chirp behind me every few minutes because the smoke alarm just started to warn me that the battery is low. I have no time to fix that. So we're marching along. We're talking about Lions. We're talking about Patriots. Greg, let's start off uh, looking at Sunday's win. Uh, did it change your view about this Patriots team? It did not. I mean, you know, look, uh, the Patriots do this every year. I mean, you know, even if you want to throw the third string backup QB thing in there, uh, they've done it before. You know, Jacoby Brissett, Houston Texans, shutout game, big Thursday night game. Jacoby Brissett runs for a touchdown. Um, You know, you could also, I'm sure a lot of people like to throw out, well, this was the highest scoring and best offense in the league. Okay, that's fine. There's a lot of different circumstances under that. Like, you know, they trailed huge against the Eagles in in week one. And to me, week one is week one. I kind of throw that out the window. They, They trailed big to the Seahawks and came back. So to me, there's circumstances with that. You know, use your eyes. I mean, did you did you see an offense on that field for the lions that was anything remotely close to uh, one of the best in the league. I did not. I thought Jared Goff was completely awful in this game. Did the Patriots have something to do with that? Absolutely. They pressured him at a 60% rate in this game. A lot of it came in the second half when they were up double digits and, you know, threw a lot more blitzes at him over double the amount of blitzes in the second half. I think they were just trying to see, how things work at that point. And they were able to, you know, I I thought Jared Goff played terrible in the game. Some of it had to do with the Patriots. Some of it just had to be, it had to do with Jared Goff being Jared Goff. And and I do think there's something to the site of Bill Belichick um, on the sideline and Goff just getting out of his own head, even before things start. I didn't think, you know, he didn't play very well in the Super Bowl and other instances. Um, so uh, in terms of this game, no, nothing's changed. I mean, Nick, look, this is now five straight weeks that we have correctly predicted the game. Now, we didn't think it was going to be a shutout. We didn't think it was uh, – we thought it was going to be close. And that the and it probably would have been if the Lions didn't make some of their um, decisions and also execution uh, on some of the plays. I mean, they, that was not a shutout. I mean, the Lions drove into Patriots territory repeatedly on Sunday uh, for various reasons. They did not put up any points. Um, so, but, uh, you know, I thought that the Patriots would uh, would cover. They did. They did what I expected them to do. I expected them to have a really good plan with Bailey Zappi. I expected them to be run happy, uh, run centric. And I expected the Lions to be absolutely horrible on defense, and they were. And all that played into, you know, Bailey Zappi being able to have a good, comfortable game. I thought he was solid. I didn't think he was spectacular or good or anything like that. I just thought he was – he did what he was supposed to do. And good for him, good for the Patriots. But, no, this game does not – the fact that they've beaten the Steelers and the Lions, two one and four teams – does absolutely nothing to change my perspective on this team. I think it justifies what we talked about last week. The idea that this isn't a bottom five team, the ESPN rankings had yep. them down towards the bottom five yep. is the middle of the pack team that against really bad teams can take advantage of certain situations and, and walk away with a, a convincing, pretty easy, all things considered uh, win like they did on Sunday. It's it's not a bottom feeder. It's in that middle of the pack. They can compete with good teams if they play really good football. They can beat bad teams convincingly if they play really good football. Let's talk about Bailey Zappi, Greg, uh, and the offense. People might look at this game and say, hey, they put up, you know, the points they put up. They played well. Bailey Zappi was good. Uh, you touched on it a little bit. Overall, your thoughts on this offense and how they looked against the Lions. Yeah, you know, I thought, um, look, this was an offense that basically ran through two people. Ramondre Stevenson, once Damian Harris went out with the the hamstring injury, which is a tough blow, but 
then again, that's why you have two number ones and why I loved this backfield that if, you know, if for some reason Harris wasn't there, then Stevenson can carry the load and be a true number one. Same thing. If Stevenson was out, Harris could do the same thing. And uh, so they'll have to deal with that. It looks like it might be a couple weeks with a hamstring injury. Aguilar has got a hamstring injury as well, but um, you know, they went into this game knowing that the lions are they're the worst defense in the league and one that started losing defensive backs all over the place. And so, you know, the Patriots did what I thought they would do. They, it would be very run centric, try to, uh, you know, give Bailey Zappi, put him in good situations, give him half field reads. Um, and I thought, you know, Stevenson was a monster. Jacoby Myers was great. Those are the two guys who sort of carried the offense and, and Bailey Zappi managed the game. Now, was he flawless managing the game? No, he wasn't. He he made some mistakes in this game at BSJ. I have a column up. Uh, I went through it. I mean, but you have to start with the fact when you talk about the conversation with Zappi, you have to have, have to acknowledge that basically if you could dream up a scenario for a third string rookie quarterback uh, to make their start, it's it, it was what happened here. You know, it's the Detroit Lions, an opponent with the league's worst defense by every metric. He was very well protected. They often kept the back and or the tight end to give him extra protection. I only had uh, them giving up four total quarterback pressures in the game. So he was, he was made to feel comfortable in the pocket. Uh, Patriots grabbed the lead, never let it go. Uh, they always had that advantage in this game. Dominant running game. The defense gave you a touchdown to the point you didn't need to score one or you didn't really need to score one, but you, you didn't score yours until almost the fourth quarter. Um, and, and so when you start there, it doesn't get any better than that when you're a third string rookie quarterback making your uh, first start. Now, you know, as far as his, I had him for the game. I had him for five plus plays. I had him for basically seven minus plays. I have six, but then the, the more I've thought about another play, the more I put it on him. Uh, but you know, I thought he did a really nice job. The the plus plays I had for him, uh, second quarter, 921 left, Bailey scrambles for five yards. Aiden Hutchinson had him dead to rights. Uh, Bailey saw him, didn't bat an eye, just faked, faked Hutchinson out of his shorts, went around him, gained five yards, all of a sudden second and seven. That's a, that's a very good play. Uh, there was a, a second quarter, 146 left. Myers pushed out of bounds at the 28 for 15 yards. Uh, that was when Zappi climbed the pocket again, uh, hit Myers for a nice gain. The next play, second and seven later in that drive, uh, he threw, he, he made two passes that I really liked in this game. One was, but they're both to Hunter Henry. One was the second quarter, second and seven, 114 left before halftime, where the Lions were playing trap coverage. Uh, and uh, Bailey Zappi threw, threw to Hunter Henry's back shoulder. A lot of rookie quarterbacks, A, would have thrown a pick there into the trap coverage. He identified it. Not only did he not do that, but he threw back shoulder so that Hunter Henry could protect himself. So normally a, a, a bad rookie quarterback or a, a really young green quarterback either throws a pick or throws his receiver into the defender and the kid gets light, lit up. And I will say that, uh, you know, the, the other Henry one came with 5.09 left in the third quarter. It was a third and three play. The Lions came with a blitz. Stevenson picked it up. He did that four times in this game. He did, he did a great job in blitz pickup. And, uh, and this was the only time in the whole game that Zappi had to make a full field read. He looked to his left. Everything was covered. He came back to his right. Uh, he bought time, waited for Hunter Henry to come back to him and made a really strong throw from the other hash mark to a diving Hunter Henry to, to convert a first down. To me, that was by far Bailey Zappi's uh, best play in this game and definitely, uh, you know, good signs, you know, and, and, you know, once we get your, your take on it, Nick, we can sort of talk about some of the things I didn't love in this game. Yeah, I think it's all about expectations, Greg. And and for you and I, I think we had lower expectations, right? We we weren't going to get caught up in the zappy fever. And I thought this offense, all things considered, what you could expect 
from a rookie quarterback who was a third string guy before Brian Hoyer's concussion, you know, middle of the the rounds draft pick. I thought he played well enough and, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't turn the football over, which is good. As you said, he made some good throws and I'm not surprised that they were led by the run game. We both anticipated that. And that's exactly what happened. Speaking of zappy fever and, and zappy's game, I know some people going to get all jacked and pumped about Bailey Zappi. And if I had to hear Jonathan Vilma say, don't worry, be Zappi one more time. I was going to flip my couch over. But with all of that said, um, is he a threat in any way to Mac Jones? No, absolutely not. I mean, look, I'm not going to discount like if Bailey Zappi improves and he uh, and, and he keeps winning, which, you know, again, uh, they're going up. This is the meat of their schedule. I mean, the, you know, the Browns will be tough for competition, but these are still teams that the Patriots should beat. I mean, it's Jacoby Brissett on the other sideline. It's not Deshaun Watson. Uh, they have the Jets coming up. Uh, they have the, oh my God, the Bears who are just horrendous. And uh, like, <laughs> we we talked about this last week. We knew this was going to happen. That like, I, pred- I predicted before the season, they start one and three, win four straight, five and three, and then let's see. And, uh, it might even be more than that. It might be six, seven wins in a row, and they still won't, wouldn't have proven to me that they're that they're any time a type of formidable team. Just like we were last year. I know. I look. I have a lot of people blocked and muted on Twitter, so I don't see a lot of my mentions. But I know I'm already getting heat for you know talking like this, and I would just tell people, remember what certain media members were saying after the Titans game last year. OK, remember who was excited about what was going on and how they were the top seed in the AFC and who had questions and who wasn't sure and who didn't buy in and, and ask yourself who was right. And so I feel completely comfortable where I am. If I'm the outlier, if people want to call me negative Nelly, I don't really care. I, I feel completely comfortable where I am. And, and this whole Bailey Zappy thing is just, you know, ridiculous. I mean, good, smart kid, uh, you know, is unflappable, uh, which I love about him. But look, at the end of the day, he's still six foot and a half inches, um, not six foot one and a half, six foot and a half inches. And he does not have a strong arm. He has a, he has a get by arm. I mean, basically from watching him now, his first career start plus the, 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 the Packers game, um, you know, kid's done an admirable, admirable job, but you know, he, his arm strength's limited to me. When I see him, I see chase Daniel, who's now in his, I think 12th year in the league, he's made $36 million and he's only made five career starts. Um, and he's two and three. He's, he's been really that's efficient when he's played. Hmm? Yeah. And so that's what I see with, with, with zappy to this point. Um, you know, he had some, the first drive of the game short short circuited with a couple of bad decisions by them. You know, a lot of people have said part of the narrative is he's really smart. He manages the game. Well, he does, he gets them in and out of good plays. No, actually he got them into some disastrous plays against the lions that if it wasn't the lions, then it would have blown up in their face. For example, uh, the Ramondre Stevenson fumble play. First of all, that wasn't, that was Bailey Zappi's fumble. And what happened on that play was every person on the field, but Bailey Zappi thought that was a RPO uh, pass. The receivers are tearing down the field. The offensive line are, are in pass blocking off of the ball. And Ramondre Stevenson over exaggerates his arms to signify play action. And they fumbled and they're lucky the ball bounced right back to Ramondre. There's another play later in the game where, they threw on another third down play, third and 11. Zaley, they're in the red zone. Zappy's audibling, and he ends up throwing left to Kendrick Bourne for one yard. Well, Kendrick Bourne and the, the offensive line were running a tunnel screen. All the receivers and Hunter Henry were sprinting down the field into the end zone and looking around like, what's going on? So, you know, it was not a perfectly, uh, managed game by Bailey Zappi was a good but the other thing I want people to keep in mind here and and if you want to have a larger discussion about where the Patriots offense is uh not only they're they're I think 
the 16th, 18th most efficient offense over at footballoutsiders.com. That is against the easiest schedule to date in the league for an offense. So just keep that in mind that uh, things are going to get a bit tougher from here on out. And it's been, uh, it, it's been a advantageous opening for Matt Patricia in the offense so far. I thought Bailey played probably as well as you could expect him to play with, with, with the mistakes included. I, I did not think this guy was going to go out there and light the world on fire. I don't think he lit the world on fire. I, I thought, you know, I walked away from that game saying that's the most I could expect from him. Like if you were expecting more from Zappy, I think you had unreasonable expectations. I just kind of went in there assuming there would be at least a handful of plays where you kind of shake your head because of the circumstances that were dealt. And and I would also say that, you know, for, for his, for his sake, I wanted to get your thoughts on this, Greg, because I've heard some people say, Hey, you know, Matt Patricia did a pretty decent job scheming around the situation that he was given. But what did you think about the game plan and, and the play calling and how they handled Zappy overall? Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was straight out of uh, the Patriots historic playbook for backup um, sort of restricted quarterbacks. I mean, whether it was Matt Castle or Jacoby Brissett or, uh, you know, not Garoppolo. Well, I'm not sure how much Garoppolo played early in his career, but, you know, it certainly was different when Brady was suspended. They were prepared for that and and could air it out. Jimmy was at that point. Um but, you know, I, I look, I, I I assume Bill Belichick had a heavy hand in this. It looked like they sort of dusted off uh, a Mac Jones uh, game plan from early on when he was a rookie. Um, I, I didn't think – I mean, I guess, I guess you can give him credit for, you know – focusing on the run against a bad defense and, you know, and, and giving him basically half field reads um, that was good, but you know, it was pretty much like, you know, run, 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 play action guys, pretty much open. Um, I, I didn't think it was anything out of the ordinary. They should do that against the, the worst defense in the league. And so I don't give Matt Patricia any extra credit. I, you know, he did a good job. Um, he didn't do a bad job. And, you know, he did a good job, but uh, I'm not going any further than that. I'm not asking for any mea culpas or anything like that. Like, um, look, they've beaten the Steelers and the Lions, and they've had the easiest offensive schedule to date. Um, Let's just hold the horses on uh, making any huge declarations about this offense and, and, you know, where they are and where they're going. I give them a little bit more credit than you do. Uh, I do think they played Miami tough. They obviously played Green Bay very tough, um, especially given the fact you had to go to your third string quarterback during that game. And, you know, Baltimore, they turned the football over three or four times. Uh, I don't think they're a great team. I think overall you and I agree on where they are in the league. I just would give them a little bit more credit than you're probably giving them through the first five weeks with everything they've had to deal with. But let's talk about the O-line quickly. How did you think they performed on Sunday? Uh, I thought they were really good uh, in the past game. I thought that, the you know, the Lions, they're very aggressive. They tried to throw a lot of things there. The Patriots did provide some extra blockers, but I thought uh, I thought they did excellent pass protection. I only had four total quarterback pressures for the group, which is absurdly low. Uh, Isaiah Wynn gave up two and a half of those. Hunter Henry had one of them. So I think I think Trent Brown might have had a half a pressure. Um so I thought they were good. I thought their run blocking wasn't great in this game. Um, they, they gave up a lot of run stuffs in this game. And I thought Stevenson, his, I think I had him for seven broken tackles in this game. Um, he, he was just awesome. absurd. He was beast mode in this game. Uh, but yeah, I thought the offensive line was a lot better. I thought David Andrews had his best game. Cole Strange had his best game. Trent Brown played strong again. Awenu was strong again. And Isaiah Wynn was... Uh, Isaiah Wynn. Before we get to the defense, uh, any quick, and I mean quick thoughts on receivers and tight ends. Uh, Aguilar needs to go to the bench. Just too many mistakes. I mean, you know, he, he, he had the drop for the interception, has two fumbles. That's his second drop of the season. Um, LJ Humphrey had a rough game. At least he got less snaps. Hallelujah. Um, Kendrick Bourne, two penalties. He, you know, you got to do more with your opportunity than that. 
which was disappointed to see. Tyquan Thornton really didn't get a chance to do much, uh, but at least he was on the field, and that's promising. And he looked he looked fast. Um, they're just going to have to get him up to speed, which I think they used a lot of the second half to do. So I didn't have a lot of issues with that. But um, in Hunter Henry, it was great to see him get involved, and and they need to continue that. Yeah, down the seam for Henry early in the game, made a couple of good catches, the back shoulder you referenced. So it was nice to see Henry show up a little bit here and give me more Tyquan Thornton. Not because I think he's going to be a beast right away, but because I think he's got potential. I think he helps this offense at least take away some of the safety help. And again, Aguilar, come on, give me a break. You got to catch the football when it hits you in the chest. And I just... Kendrick Bourne, the two penalties we've been preaching to get him on the field and, and you got to stay on the field by not committing those penalties. So I think it opens the door for Taekwon. I'd like to see him a little bit more here over the yep. next few weeks as he gets active. Uh, before we get to the defense, because we want to talk about that side of the football. Tell us about athletic greens, Greg. I started taking AG one because I wanted to make sure I was getting all the vitamins and nutritional supplements I needed in one place. I was sick of ordering like six different pills, you know, with vitamins and stuff to make sure I was getting what I needed. Now I've been on it AG one for three months and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy, even though it's a green liquid. I know everybody's like, I don't want to try that. Trust me. It's good. It kind of has a mild tropical taste, a little minty, and I look forward to it each morning. So what is this? What is this stuff? Listen up. Because all you need is one delicious scoop of AG1 and you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system. Important now that we're going into the winter months up here in New England. God damn it. Your energy, recovery, focus, and <laughs> aging, all the things. And by the way, they had a little vitamin D thing that you get with your your order here uh that helps you in the winter time when the sun's not out uh, i take it first thing in the morning it's now part of my morning routine i'd be lost without it contains less than one gram of sugar i love that no gmos no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop of in a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, huge during the winter, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Bedard. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Bedard to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Talk about the defense now, Greg. Uh, how'd you think they played against an offense that, you know, was really coming into this game feeling itself and, and scoring a lot of points and in golf coming off of one of his best games that he's really ever had at the NFL level. Uh, defensively, big picture overall, how'd you how'd you think they did? Look, regardless of whether where the the the, the Lions are in terms of their offense and how good they are and Jared Goff and you know what whatever. Um all I can tell you is this, what the film showed that the Patriots played awesome on defense on Sunday. Uh, you can you can put that whatever context you want, but I had them, I had the defense, listen to this, Nick. I had them for 47 plus plays in this game. 12 minus wow. plays, 12. That's it. And I not one player had a negative rating. And when you, if you're a BSJ member, you go on there, you get a chart for me after every game where I give you, I accumulate the pluses and minuses that I give out. Some of them just aren't like real stats. They're my stats. And then I divide it by the number of plays that they play. And that comes up with a rating. It's a, I'm not saying it's the end all be all. It's a general sort of rating gives me an indication of how guys play by position group and not one Patriots player had a negative uh, rating in this game, which uh, I'm sure has never, ever happened. So they were tremendous. That means that they executed flawlessly. That's really good. The other side of the coin, I will say, is this. The Patriots always have a game or two like this against a weak opponent who's not ready for the spotlight. It usually happens at home. Um, and it doesn't mean anything larger than the Patriots play great. The other team plays bad in, in, in one or two games a year. And, uh, and that's the norm for them. So uh, it, it's good that they're at that point. And it means that they can execute when needed. And that's that's huge because they don't have a lot of talent on this defense. So they're going to need to execute to maximize that talent. 
The one concern I have about them so far is they're a little leaky against the run. And, and I know when you look at yep. the statistics, yards yep. per carry, they're, they're pretty good. And I know on Sunday, if you look overall yards per carry, it was really good. But you, you did see some of that stuff up front again, where Detroit had some, some big runs in some spurts. You go back to uh, what Green Bay was able to do on the ground. You go back to Lamar Jackson thrashing this defense in the second half with his legs. That's the one concern I have. I do think if they can find a way, and maybe it's Jamie Collins, maybe it's McMillan helping out, maybe it's a, a healthy Kyle Duggar coming downhill, maybe it's acquiring a big defensive lineman. Carolina is is going through a fire sale. Maybe you look at some of those guys. But if they can figure out how to at least limit the run and, and not give up big plays on the ground, I actually feel pretty good about this defense. And you know, we could sit there and we could pick apart certain things. Sure. I watch a lot of football and I I think they've done a pretty decent job so far. I mean, you go back to green Bay again, aside from the run defense, I thought Aaron Rodgers made two or three ridiculous throws that resulted in a couple of touchdowns. Um, you, You know, you look overall what they did against that Miami offense when it was healthy, what they did in the first half against, uh, Baltimore. I think if Kyle Duggar plays in that Baltimore game, Mark Andrews does not play as well as he did. Uh, when you when you look at what they did against Detroit, given the circumstances, you know, they, they shut down TJ Hawkinson, which is why I think Andrews would have had a tougher time uh, if, if Duggar was out there. I'm not telling you again that, that it's a great defense. I just I feel pretty good about it. And I think, you know, Steve Belichick and Gerard Mayo after last year, there were a lot of communication issues. And yes, they had to take a timeout because of 12 men. Uh, I saw that. I understand it. But overall, it, it seems like there's less confusion. There's a little less chaos on that side of the ball this year. And the secondary, among everything, is playing better than I thought. Like, Jack Jones gives me some good feels about his potential. Jonathan Jones has been much better than I thought he would be on the outside. Uh, I'd like to see Marcus Jones. He's starting to get, you know, a little bit more snaps from Miles Bryant. But I, I think the secondary has played better than I thought they would going in. Uh, let's talk about, though, Judon and that defensive line, Greg. Your, your thoughts on on what they were able to accomplish against Detroit. Yeah, I thought Matthew Judon was completely dominant. One of his best games. I had him for nine-plus plays, zero negatives. I, I think I had him for seven quarterback pressures in this game. I mean, it's just – it's absurd. What I really liked in this game, and hopefully this continues uh, – and they're playing the long game with Judon. He only played 55% of the snaps. There was often times where uh, Anthony Jennings and Tavai were giving him a rest and, and they were using him more. I think of his 36 plays, 25 were pass rushes. So, you know, look, uh, hopefully they're realizing the errors of their ways that they had last year where they just kept the guy in the field and he just ran out of juice by the end of the season. And, you know, we saw what would happen when Matthew Judon was at full capabilities. I think this team was nine and four Um, when he ran out of juice in the last five games. They were one and one and four. And he did nothing uh, in the last five games. And, you know, if they if they have any hope of beating Buffalo at the end of the season, uh, Judon's going to have to be the guy because there's nobody there's nobody else on this defense that comes close to his playmaking potential. The, the pass rush, it's only widened the gap between him and the rest of the team. Uh, certainly from last year, Christian Barmore was largely shut down in this game. Again, that's going to be an issue moving forward. Uh, but Judon, he's ridiculous. And uh, they need to keep him in that lane because, God forbid, this defense has to play without him. I don't know what's going to happen. He's been spectacular. And it's not only that he's making plays. It's also when he's making those plays, the the fourth down play, which shout out to Dan Campbell going for it on fourth and nine. (laughs) Um, But, but Judon, Judon making that strip sack of golf and obviously the Duggar scoop and score uh, the, the breakup of the wheel route against green Bay, which you talked about how he diagnosed it and adjusted during the play to break that up. He's, He's just made so many impact plays. The dude is a beast. How about the linebackers? Your your guy Tavai uh, McMillan played a little bit in this game as well. Uh, Bentley, your thoughts on the second level there? Yeah, I thought all the linebackers were were pretty good in this game, uh, all of them. Um, and you just listed them. Um, you know, I thought Tavai played well and executed uh, what he was supposed to do. I thought McMillan flashed when he was in, so that's good. It gives them some legs and and certainly helps. 
Uh, I thought, you know, Bentley had one of his more impactful games, but, you know, I do want to caution, especially with Bentley, this was one of those typical games where they know the quarterback's limited and they know they can be uber aggressive. And it's sort of the same thing with Kyle Duggar at safety. Duggar had a good game, but you see this out of him in games where the Patriots are confident that this other team doesn't have anything. The other quarterback doesn't have anything. So I'm just going to let it hang loose and I'm going to go make plays. That's great in these games. It doesn't always continue. Um, but I thought I thought the linebackers did. A, they, they did a nice job in this game. Yeah, they got gashed in a run a little bit. It was both equal parts, the linebackers and the safeties to me. I thought the run fits with the defensive line were pretty good. You know, Godshaw had a few issues here and there, but uh, I thought it was good. I love Duggar downhill, man. Uh, he, he just, I, I just, I think he's one of their best tacklers when he's coming downhill. He, he, he's done it against some st- stiff and tough competition. Uh, he did it a, a number of times against Tyree Kill in week one. He made another play coming downhill this past week. I, I just think he's really effective in, in that role. Jack Jones in the secondary, Greg, what are you thinking? Yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, look, Jack Jones is, um, <laughs> as a film watcher, I just, it's interesting. I wonder how the the coaches feel about it because, man, he is Mr. Boom and Bust. He really is. He's like a heart attack waiting to happen. Like, he can make, <laughs> I mean, his interception that he made was just, it was sincere. Not the inter, not the play, but the actual catching of the ball and getting two feet down was just, I mean, it was absurd. It was like what a top receiver does. You know, now, the play was a, it was one where Jared Goff just completely threw up on himself like three different times in terms of it should have been a touchdown to Tom Kennedy over McCourty. He didn't see that. Then he double clutched to the outside and threw it high and, and, and late. Uh, it was just a terrible play by Goff. But, uh, you know, Jack Jones had another, you know, he was in on another three passes in the game. But, you know, he also gave up two third and longs. Uh, you know, he, he's, you're going to get a team. I, the bills are going to be waiting for him, you know, whether it's Stephon Diggs or Gabe Davis or something, I'm sure they are already watching film and saying like, we are going to double move that kid to death. And so, you know, it's, he's been really strong to this point. He has as many bad plays as he does good plays. And now you're just hoping to lessen the bad plays with every week, but that's what you get with a rookie. So, you know, that he has, he has a much higher ceiling than any other young cornerback that I've seen. I mean, it does rival JC Jackson, uh, not quite the size of JC Jackson, but uh, very similar, very promising. I'll take the learning curve with the playmaking ability. And you're right. He's a younger guy. Expect mistakes. He's going to get cooked, but how to respond to getting cooked is a, is a huge thing. And, And I'll tell you this, he definitely has the swag to be a number one corner. I don't know if he's going to be a number one corner, but that dude got swag for days. He got swag at the podium. He has swag on the field. I am going to put him on the all celebration team immediately. He makes it. Every time he makes a play, the dude is good for a great celebration. So he's he's got the cornerback swag. There's no doubt about that. He has the Panda Express uh, swag. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> he does. A, a quick, efficient three up, three down this week. Yeah. Let's start with three up, Greg. Uh, Judon Stevenson and, uh, Jacoby Myers. I thought those were, uh, three, even though Kyle Duggar, uh, David Andrews and Kyle Duggar were just on the outside, but those are my three up. Yeah. Stevenson is legit. He's a number one back. I think he could be a three down back. He is exciting to watch. He's got the wiggle. He is tough to bring down. He's got good, uh, better than anticipated speed in the open field. I I think, and you said he, the, the blitz pickups this past weekend, I I think we're witnessing a stud. We're we're witnessing a stud at running back and and they have two studs. Let's not forget Damian Harris. I'm a big Damian Harris guy, but Stevenson, man, as a receiver, especially he's got some pop uh judon again makes the list he's pretty much on it every week and i'm going to just give the offensive line some love because i thought they were good three down there you go uh i only had four down for the game total because i do five down for bsj members so i'll give them to you Aguilar, little jordan humphrey played 14 snaps had one and a half stuffed runs and a penalty isaiah win in five games he's allowed 16 pressures and he's a minus 19 for me and my boy kendrick bourne Two penalties to show for his increased pen, uh, playing time. That's that's all I had for the game. I should have said offensive line minus win. Um, <laughs> I'll just throw something out there that has to this has this, they have to improve on, and that's red zone offense. 
Yeah. Um, they've got to start finishing drives. Finish drives, especially when you start playing better teams. Finish drives. That that's that's on my down list. Aguilar obviously is on everybody's down list. Uh, BSJ member question of the day: thirty nine ninety nine on their annual plan. Uh, you get all sorts of great coverage of Boston Pro Sports, as you know already. Uh, Greg also uh, hits you up with the film room and, and his chats. He does. Uh, Greg, what is the BSJ member question of the day? So Brian H on the win subject says, Greg, what do you think the offseason plan is to replace win first round draft pick trade free agency feels like the in- interior offensive line is solidified until Andrews retires. But what are the tackles? Uh, it's a great question. I think they need to get busy with the next generation. I mean, you know, we've talked about it. Both their tackles are unreliable. Uh, Trent Brown's been great the last four games. He really has got off to a rough start in the first game. Question is buy in. He's been locked in ever since. And uh, when Trent Brown is locked in, that's great for everybody. But he's not getting any younger and he's not getting any more reliable. So I think they need to find, uh, you know, they might think that Kajus could be ready. They've kept him on the roster. Perhaps they think, you know, he's getting closer. I don't think he's ever going to get there to be a starter. Maybe he's a backup for you. But I think they, I, I wanted them to draft a tackle up high this past year. For this reason, um, I think they're going to need to continue to do that. And I think they're going to need to get busy with that or else they're going to get shot, caught shorthanded again at another position. And they got to figure it out at right tackle. But you do feel pretty good about the rest of the guys. As long as Cole Strange yep. gets better as he goes along this mm-hmm. year, you do, you, you do feel good, you know. Uh, Owen who's been good. Andrews is Andrews. As you said, Trent Bowne, I think, has been tremendous since the Miami game maybe getting called out and embarrassed a couple of times in that game, woke him up, but he's been really good. It, it might be makeshift the rest of the year. If Wynn continues to struggle, you might have a rotation of, you know, Wynn and cannon and, and Kajus if he gets back, you, you know, you, you try to just throw the three guys out there and see who's performing the best week to week. Not great for this year, but at least they got four out of five. I mean, if you watch the Raiders, they played with like their fifth or sixth offensive line combination last night. They're all over the place up front. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name is Greg Bedard. I am Nick Cattles, the Greg Bedard Patriots podcast with Nick Cattles brought to you by Athletic Greens. We're back later this week to preview Browns, Patriots, and what we expect. Should be a good pod. Should be a good game breakdown. Till then, be well. <laughs> 